imagine if they thought of you like that, then there would be more touch points. Mm -hmm. You would deepen the relationship. And if you have, you know, competitors, it's going to be tough to unseat you. But as an indispensable leader, you go the extra mile. Hi, Larry. How are you today? I'm great, Lorette. How are you today? I am very good. And thank you so much for joining me on Owning Your Legacy. Really nice to meet you in person. Honored to be here. So I was wondering if you could just start with telling a little bit of your story, which is very interesting. I'm a Chicagoan, born and raised, lived here for many years, and I'm married for uh, going on 34 years uh, this year. Congratulations. To uh, a, a lovely woman that I, I met at a McDonald's drive through many years ago and eloped to Vegas. So good that's, stories that there, but that's not great, what this is that's about That's a great today. story. We'll get to that, though. I love that story. So I have two yeah. beautiful children and a dog. And what I've kind of been, dog? Uh, he is a Yorkie poo, and he is Ooh. more Yorkie than poo. Oh. And he's named after Patrick Kane, so Kaner. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, very cool. I love the story in your book. Thank you. It's a good story. That's a good one. We might have to hit on that, too. Yeah, so so I've been in sales and leadership for decades. Mm -hmm. Been speaking about LinkedIn for many years, known as LinkedIn Larry. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not formal, legal. Can't do it. I, I would be in lawsuits. <laughs> yeah. But been Too bad you can't trademark that. That would be cool. I would like to. I just I can't afford it. But yeah. I've been speaking for about fifteen years globally, and you know, I authored the book, The NCG Factor: Networking, Connecting, Giving, back in nineteen. And yes, great book. And I'm in a corporate leadership uh, role under underneath uh, Manpower Group and Brawl. I work for Jefferson Wells. I I find it interesting the more I've gotten to know you a little bit, and um, the fact that you are a leader and have a day job, and that you find the time to really honor those connections and nurture them. So how do you manage your time? It's challenging. That's why I get up at 3 o'clock to work out. I did we just learn that, that this morning. I'm like, whoo, yeah. Okay, so, so that's so I, a I log a lot of hours, and but I find the time. It's important. I even told you know people that I work for and with, if I don't get to help other people make those connections internally to externally, right. I'm just not going to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. So I do make the time. And sometimes it's, it doesn't take much time. You know, I could yeah. be doing while I'm on the treadmill. I could be making a connection and yeah. helping other people and, and so augmenting I would what I do with my leadership. Role. If I did that on the treadmill. <laughs> I'm very good. Very balanced. Very balanced. Yeah, very balanced. So it and it probably feeds into your your day job. You know what I mean? Like I feel like I sometimes feel like that too. Like my day job and, and even doing these podcasts, like there's a link to it that um supports each other, you know? It does. No, the, everything I do aligns with my job and things that I have to turn down, they may not align. So I, I make yeah. sure it all syncs together. Otherwise, I wouldn't be in my corporate role because it's hilarious. Doing all this extracurricular doesn't right. align with but it yeah, our business, but it, but it all fits well together. I would love you to, to kind of dive a little deeper into your LinkedIn strategies as you are LinkedIn Larry. And for our listeners... This man has over 30,000 followers, which is amazing on LinkedIn. And you adopted LinkedIn very early in its inception, which I thought was really cool. So I think you have a lot of lessons to teach us. So anything you want to share on that strategy and what you would recommend to people that aren't really comfortable with LinkedIn? LinkedIn has been a game changer for me, and it, it really aligned well with my book. I wrote about it in my book. I did put point click in the book because it becomes obsolete every six months or less. Mm -hmm. But for me, LinkedIn's been phenomenal where everyone needs to be on LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn's like a database for you know recruiters. Right. You know, uh, my company is probably one of, one of the largest clients for LinkedIn. We have a lot of recruiters that recruit talent mm -hmm. through LinkedIn. But just generally for yourself as you know, CEO of Edlong or myself, it's a branding opportunity. Right. And, you know, a lot of people think it's a resume, but there's things in my profile I would never put on a resume. You would never hire me at Edlong for the things I put in my profile because I could share things that are personal, not weird, crazy, disgusting things, but right. things that are professional and fun. 
And I can't put those on a resume, mm-hmm. but I could use LinkedIn as an extension of the things that I like if I'm philanthropic. Yeah. But it's a great way to get to know people. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people don't use it as research for interviews, even meeting with your team mm-hmm. as a leader. You'd be surprised what you learn about some of your staff. Mm-hmm. Maybe That's good, good yeah. maybe not so good. Or shared connections. If you're a second degree to someone, you would share some connections right. in common. That's where we play that you know, right. kind of LinkedIn we, bingo. Yeah. We did a little bit of that. Yeah. And Surprising. you see how we know people. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing sometimes how I, that works I have out. a question on that note. We all get a lot of requests. Do you accept all of them? So, you know, if you don't know this person, tell me your strategy on that. When do you accept the invitation and when don't you? It's a great question. And I would say initially when I was trying to build on LinkedIn, I joined when there was about a million members. Now there's about 800 million globally. So initially I wanted to build this big network. Mm -hmm. And so I connected with a lot of people. And they cap you as a paid or free member at 30,000 connections. Learned that from your book too. Yeah, so I keep hovering. So I'm I'm right around the 29,000, you know, seven or eight mark. Mm -hmm. I don't accept everybody because I hit that cap. Right. But I would say most people on LinkedIn should scrutinize a little bit, have a good baseline of the people you know, like, and trust. But there's other people want to connect that are legitimate, that align with, you know, the background or something that they do that aligns with your world and your business or your personal beliefs. I like how you look like a good connection. I like how you say that, you know, write a comment. Don't just don't just throw an invitation out there. And that's how you and I met. And you mentioned Des. And I'm like, ooh, I want to know Larry. So I think that was really good advice that not just a cold invitation, but why do you want to connect? Personalize, reference some things, pull some things from that profile or people in common. Mm -hmm. We get too many default messages. And the personalized that are not salesy really make an impact. And that that helps me scrutinize who I want to bring into my network as Mm -hmm. well. And so don't just go and click connect anywhere you see it. Always go to their their profile page to connect and customize a message or mm-hmm. on the app, there's a different way to do it as well. Yeah. And then Sales Navigator is another level, right? So Sales Navigator, those are paid memberships. Okay. So I always tell people, don't pay initially. So LinkedIn founders, if you're listening, I'm sorry, but <laughs> don't pay initially. Get some ROI, understand how to use it, and then you right. can go to different levels of membership. But Navigator is not just for salespeople, it is for people who are power users okay. and want to use it like a CRM. It's a, it's very powerful. Hmm. And my whole team on the sales side of uh, what I lead, they're all on a, a team enterprise Navigator version. Mm-hmm. What's your advice on how often to post? Is there a, a rhythm to that that you feel is important or... You know, what What would you say to most people about that? Well, the posting is a good thing. How did you brand your profile is another That's piece to that, right? So if you if you post, it's great that they go, who's posting? Oh, it's Lorette. Oh, look yeah. at Lorette's profile. She has no picture or no background image. It drives me crazy when people don't have but a picture, do. doesn't but it? Because you like to see their face. You want to see like that they've got a robust, right. deep profile, providing that credibility who they are. Right. That aligns with the thought leadership and the posting. As far as how often, you don't want to be out, you know, too often and posting every hour. You're gonna, right. you're gonna lose some of your network. They're gonna unfollow lose and not credibility. Wanna... Yeah. So I would just be smart and wise. And okay. so when I present, I tell people I used to have ideas where I, when I thought the best timing was to post mm-hmm. the best days, how often, and then do they have metrics on that? Well, like LinkedIn. There, there, there's algorithms and things right. like that that align with the posting and, and what's going to work best. Mm-hmm. It's just there's someone in my network that's actually in my book that had a really successful post and he didn't have a video of a cute puppy or baby. Yeah. He didn't tag anybody, didn't use hashtags, and it threw me off on the advice I give when, how often, what to put in, not put in. So what I just tell people have a post that has all the spelling, everything's correct, mm-hmm. that it's content rich, and you know, easy to follow and read, right. applicable, interesting, and it's still okay to put a video of a puppy or baby mm-hmm. and put some hashtags and tag people. 
you know, but yeah. I think you just don't want to overwhelm people with posting too much right. every single day. That's good advice. And I really like what you're saying about, you know, checking your profile every once in a while, you know, it probably has to be refreshed. It's something that once you do it, you kind of leave it there and you don't really look at your own very often, but you probably should at least, you know, once a year, check it out and it's good. Freshen Clean, it cleanup's up. Cleanup's good. So I would like to, from your book, dig into the indispensable leader concept because I think that's very intriguing. So share your thoughts on what that means to you. So being an indispensable leader, being indispensable to your company, being indispensable to your family, friends, mm -hmm. your network, sometimes it goes beyond what you do professionally, that they will come to you for things outside of work and inside of work, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I want people to come to me and the leader in my business with my team, not just for, hey, I've got a billing issue, I've got an issue with this, right. you know, with one of our consultants. I don't want it to be just that. Hey, you know, my son, this happened, can you help out? Mm -hmm. Or one of my clients got displaced. Could you meet with them? Mm -hmm. I want to be indispensable. So an indispensable leader goes above and beyond, but is thought, be, thought of beyond their role. Right. as a go-to. Think about this, if your clients thought of Ed Long and all your team members mm -hmm. as indispensable for what you provide through Ed Long, but outside of that, they would come to you and go, hey, look, I have a sick family member. Is there any way you could help us get into Mayo Clinic? Right, yeah. Imagine if they thought of you like that, then there would be more touch points. Mm -hmm. You would deepen the relationship. And if you have you know, competitors, it's going to be tough to unseat you. But as an indispensable leader, you go the extra mile. Right. I can I see trusted advisor as you're talking as well. Like that's one one word that we use at Edlong is the customers that come to us as a trusted advisor. Well, you know, way more than just the flavor concept. It could be the texture. It could be marketing. It could be labeling. You know, and then when the relationship blossoms it turns into exactly what you're saying, a friendship, a partnership. You know, I think business is done individual at a time, right? So what's one of your stories where you felt like you were that indispensable person in someone's life that you're really proud of? I have a lot. So I have, I have some, you know, normal stories and not so normal, yeah. you know, unusual. So I can give you some within the company. I like so. unusual. Let's go unusual. Well, so, <laughs> so I'll, 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 I'll get there. I'll start with somewhat normal. So within the company, I was uh, driving one day and I, I get a call from one of our executives in our corporation. We're 20 billion. So high level executive, kind of in that C-suite mm -hmm. world, calls on my cell. Now I know this executive, but not like that. This person has never called me on my cell phone. Right. It was weird. And I got that call and I was like, oh, hi, how you doing? What's yeah. up? I need you to do me a favor. I was wondering. Now, because I've been known as LinkedIn Larry, indispensable, I'm a go-to. Right. I'm the I've got a guy guy. And he's and testing you on this now? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So this executive called me and said, I need you to do me a, f a favor for my, my daughter. Mm -hmm. My daughter's a junior, and I want to get her an internship. And I've gotten her one before, a couple, and they were mm -hmm. a day of shadowing. So it was kind of like a fake internship. Right. I need a real one. Can you help me? I said, of course, no problem. I'll connect with your daughter. I'll help her with LinkedIn and no worries at all. And she she said, I just want you to know that she's a junior in high school. Oh, now, a young do I intern. Back, do I backtrack? I mean, how many juniors. juniors in high school do you get real internships at companies? Right. But it's not too early to start. It's not too early to start. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter this person is C-suite or any level in the company. I help people at all levels. But yeah. I really wanted to deliver because I like a challenge. And when I, when I meet that challenge, it's exciting and it's rewarding. And mm -hmm. so I did have a conversation with her and we got her LinkedIn up and running. I, I love and, this aspect that when you talk about it, that I mean, I just think of the time. You took the time to meet with her, get to know her, get to know what she's interested in and where she wants an internship. That's impressive. But it's it's meaningful. It's meaningful yeah. to her. It's meaningful to me. It's rewarding. And yeah. so what we did is we spent time, got her all set up on LinkedIn, and then I started reaching out to my network. As soon as I mentioned junior in high school, they're like, ah. they're like, oh, this is <laughs> she drives. 
most likely. She drives. She drives. But <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, there was a lot of. I'm not sure if legally we could do that. I, I'm not sure if we can make that happen. And so I talked to yeah. a lot of different people, but I. I dug into my relationships. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I reached out to the strongest relationships and even those were kind of, eh, I'm not sure I can do it. Right. One came through. What did she end up doing? I, I almost don't want to say because I'm afraid that people are like, oh, so I'll just say it's it's in the public accounting space. But okay. if, I, if I divulge the name, they'll be like all these I got a juniors 16, and sophomores a 17 year old, and singers. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but it's a true. great relationship of mine. They delivered mm -hmm. and got her a four-week paid nice. internship rotating through three or four areas. Really powerful. Did she end up, I don't know how old she is now, but I wonder, did she end this up is, This is recent. This she's is still, recent, so she's, she's still, still in okay. high school. So, so I'm going to be, I'm curious if she'll end up, you know, going for accounting. She major. may, but she just, she, you know, look, she's got a great role model at the top. Right. But she is really sharp, like That's light awesome. years beyond most juniors in high school. Right. So probably, yeah. But I, but I, I loved working with her. So that's, that's one story. That's so good. let me, let me shift a little, shift outside the company because we could do these things internally mm -hmm. for those that work for us, those around us. We could do it not even as a leader. Right. And you can connect with the Lorettes and the Larrys and others that are very connected to help you become more indispensable. Mm -hmm. I was having a conversation with a business owner a few years back, and he has a promotional products business. Great conversation. And if you ask enough and you listen, you find out how you could help people even before you have to ask the question. So I learned about his business, and I knew I could help him and make introductions to potential clients. Mm -hmm. This is the way I think. So I now was in a mode where I wanted to ask him, Okay, I could do this, make these connections and help help you on the business front. Anything else I can do to help you? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna throw this out there. I wanna put an end to human trafficking. <laughs> I thought that was pretty bald. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great fantastic. Good yeah. luck. Uh, that's that's a feat. Yeah. So if I wanna connect into a charity or someone involved in that world that's trying to put an end to human trafficking. So do you know anyone? I said, no, but I'll I'll tuck that away. I know somebody. This well, <laughs> so so I but I well I did I did have a meeting a few weeks after, and I'm I'm meeting with this woman and she is a victim survivor of human trafficking. Built a charity to put an end to human trafficking. She's she was just at Super Bowl. It's a big wow. venue for it. She is, is a, she's based? amazing. So she she was she's now moved to Canada, but okay. an amazing woman. Wow. So I said. I got to tell you something. I just met with this gentleman with a promotional products business. Mm -hmm. And he wants to put an end to human trafficking. And she said, I have an event coming up and I need his services. Wow. And I put them together. She became his client. He became her sponsor. That and is it's just so a great cool. relationship to this day. Wow. Okay, so I'm, I'm kind of, now I'm not saying that's weird or unusual. It's different. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll give one more, and I can keep going because I got a lot of them. But here's I want to first before you go there. I think sure. we need to know because there's a lot of interest in that okay. of different charities. So in Chicago, there's Magdalene House that that's one of their missions, helping women. It's um, kind of a respite and a retreat to get back on your feet, I believe. And I'm probably okay. not speaking that well enough. But and then Thistle Farms is um, when I love women there that are recovering, they make candles and lotions and beautiful stuff, and all of it goes into that mission of stopping trafficking. So what's the, I just want to know the name, if you don't mind, of saying who, you know, what this what this woman started. It's Rahab, Rahab's Daughters, Rahab's Daughters. Rahab's Daughters. I'm sure I mispronounced it. Okay, well, we'll figure that out. I think that's interesting. Um, she's probably got a very interesting story. She's phenomenal, and yeah. and I and I love connecting her to other people that have a similar mission. So I yeah. I just did that again last week. So cool. it's it's fun to do that. Mm -hmm. So and it takes a lot to. I mean, that's a big mission to end that. So you know, it is. More but she's than... she's making a dent. Good. And and so Impact. my my giving of NCG is that connecting, but to help her. And I've I've done presentations to help her charity as well, cool. and it, it's that's meaningful. Yeah, the nonprofit world is a labor of love. It is. Yeah. It is. And I think that, yeah. you know, some people don't have to be connectors 
they can just be givers and be philanthropic. And, yeah. and sometimes that's that's more than enough. Sometimes it's time. So I'm on the female strong. Volunteering. Yeah. like giving every, your time. So we have young women that we um, support. They go through like an entrepreneurial program and at the end present the business that they created to like a Shark Tank panel, which you should be on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a... Uh, there's mentors needed for every young woman that's going through the program. You know what I mean? It's not always money. Sometimes we need mentorship or giving. Just, sometimes yeah. is your your knowledge, mm, yeah. and your time, exactly your experience. Expertise. Right. It's that's powerful. Mm. So giving isn't just philanthropic, and right. it's it comes in many forms. Totally and agree. So I'll give you one last one. Gotcha. I got to get this one out because right at the end of the year, right before the holidays, my wife said, "Hey, you know." so-and-so in the neighborhood who's going in six years as a widow is ready to start dating. I love I love this. I wanted to touch on this because you are a matchmaker, which we didn't touch on at the beginning. So this I, the, I love doing this, so I, I do awesome. it a lot. And so I said, oh, okay, let me let me give that some thought. And I, I actually, like, I have this intuition, and I had one person in mind, Mm -hmm. And he he's an executive at a multi billion dollar company, and, and I know he's divorced and single. Mm -hmm. And I called him up. I said, "Look, I'm I'm going to introduce you to a woman who's a widow, and she you know is ready to start dating. But I just think you two will match just uh, on your values, who you are as people. I just have this feeling, and I'm I'm connecting you, and you're going to go out. And so I introduced exactly. both of them. They went out." They set a date, but I, I didn't follow up. Mm -hmm. So after the new year, I asked my wife, said, have you heard from this woman I connected and put on a date? And said, no. I said, I'll text her. Sent a text. And from that text, she responded with a picture of the two of them arm in arm. That is so cute. And they are still together here in February, thrilled, happy as can be. I'm having... Yeah lunch with him coming up. And oh, that's awesome. So the, he's like, yeah, I found an amazing woman. You you hit it out of the park. It was fantastic. So wow. Have you, that's, are that's you going to tell me of a, of a connection, a, a networking like that, that didn't go so well? Ever had a, you must have had a, at least a few. Are you talking about the relationship the relation, side or I'm, the dating yeah, side? Yeah, I'm dodgy matchmaking side. I wouldn't say it didn't go well. I had one where the guy, like the, the woman that was on the date, but she wanted someone a little bit taller. Even though he was taller, she wanted a little height increase. I, yeah. I should have told him to wear lifts and she exactly. would That's finally hysterical. be together today. So I'm 5'10 and I, you know, I'm often six foot. I'm glad you're I, sitting down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, it used to bug me, the height thing, especially when I was younger. You know, like when you're in eighth grade and you're 5'8 and all the boys are still 5'6", if even. Then I was wait, and of course you're just more self conscious at that age. And I've learned to embrace my height, though. I feel like, especially with the role that I have, I, I've become grateful for my height. Talk a little bit about how you feel about culture. You know, I think um, it's just as a leader that's such an important topic. So, what are your beliefs and values that you hold dear in terms of culture? Well, I think it's culture is important. Culture of respect. Mm hmm. You know, culture where, you know, we help one another. I do instill the NCG factor ad nauseum to my team uh, because I want people to be giving, be thoughtful, and, and, and help one another and transcend that to our, our clients, to our consultant workforce. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think culture is really important in this, you know, post-pandemic world. I think we have a compassionate culture which is different than, than where it was before. And so I think mm -hmm. today we're more thoughtful. Hey, how how did you do throughout the pandemic, mm -hmm. not just on the business front, but personally? Yeah, mentally. Know, family, mentally. <sighs> and we, you know, we moved to virtual, right, where some weren't. It's just this whole shift. And so right. culture ties into how do things work virtually. And I have to also understand how people want to come on camera, don't want to come on camera. Everything's different. Mandating want certain hug, types of meetings. Want to hug, don't hug, don't oh, yeah. handshake. Yeah, There's watch, it's, yeah, watch that. So you, you second guess everything. Yeah. But I think it's a, a culture of respect and compassion is mm -hmm. important. I like that a lot. So Larry, tell yes. me what 
compelled you to write your book? My wife. Wow. So actually, I've been talking about writing a book for a long time. As we do. Do you know those people? I do. Right? I might be one of those people. Right? You, you yes. keep Like I kept saying it for you, I'm going to write a book. Right. And I knew I wanted to write a book for kids going to college, kids in college. I just, because I look back to Larry in college, bad Larry, you know, that I thought I could make good Larry if I had that book. <laughs> and so my my wife, you know, just one day was, you know, getting really sick of me saying I was going to write it. At the same time, I had invested in some startups that were just terrible. So so basically, my wife said, stop investing in these startups. We should invest in you. And I thought, wow. And so now, now I have to do it. I need to write this book. And I committed to doing it. And it was a phenomenal direction, transformational direction in my life to write the NCG factor, which is networking, connecting, and giving. So it's a formula for building life-changing relationships mm -hmm. from college to retirement. I thought if the book was just to be about college and, and help the kids go into college and in college, it was great. And then I started to realize that it impacts us at all stages of our life and career. Mm -hmm. And so I felt that I needed to write a book that would take us into retirement. And I was questionable about the retirement piece until I was presenting in northeastern Wisconsin to a group of like 100 CFOs. And I arrived early, and there was a woman there. And I said, oh, where are you a CFO at today? And she said, well, I'm retired. And I was talking about LinkedIn. I said, why are you here? I said, because I want to learn how I could use LinkedIn to connect people hmm. as I'm retired. And I thought, OK. And give back. And give back. And Love give back. It. And so goes through retirement. So my wife was the the reason I, I really wrote the book and stopped procrastinating. So I would tell anyone who's thinking about writing a book, talk to my wife and she'll get and you she'll on get track. You going. <laughs> so. And I did read the book and I highly recommend it. And when you when we were chatting just before getting on, I said it was it's a really nice read. I like that it's easy to to digest the advice you offer in that book and, and it's not, it's things that you can implement quickly. I guess maybe that's what I'm saying. It was very digestible and like, hey, I can do that like right now, you know? So good job. Very good job Thank in you. the book. You Thank know. you. I couldn't write a 400 page book. I couldn't do right. it. Right. And I couldn't read a 400 page book. I know. Maybe that's what I'm trying. <laughs> Who's got the time? This was, you could do this. Like you can read it um, in an afternoon. Yes. It's not too hard to digest at all. So. There's a saying that you that you said when we were talking before too that I think you should dive into about, you know, leaving alone kind of you have a great little you should trademark that one too. But, I know I know you're talking about. Yeah. So yeah. if if you lead with yourself, you will leave with yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that's as a leader. That's just in any conversation. I'm a big believer that we should ask good questions, do our research and ask good questions personally, right. professionally get to know people, mm -hmm. but if we're leading that conversation and not, not you know, talking to the other person and asking questions and listening. Right. And genuinely being curious. I feel like that's one thing I've learned on just even starting this podcast. It hasn't even been a year yet. I love learning about people. I'm just curious about their lives and their stories. And it's uh, none of, I, I walk away every time learning something new. It's it's powerful. It is, and, and it's asking those questions that others may not ask. I I mm -hmm. read someone's profile on LinkedIn. I was just talking to this gentleman in Minnesota. I pulled something about out of his profile that he was you know doing something with tires, mm -hmm. washing dishes, and I just brought up these different things that are buried in his profile. Wow! And he said in poetry, he said no one has ever asked me those questions about my background because I was curious, but I took the time to research and dig yeah. and gain to know people. So it's really, it is something I created, but I believe so in it. Again, that's great advice because I find myself, I definitely do research and look at someone's LinkedIn, but I probably don't dig into the profiles enough. I look and see the connections. I look maybe where they went to school and what their major was and that kind of stuff, but I, I think I skip over the profile too much. There's, so, you know, the, the connections you share... Things in their yes. headline, but the about section. And I, mm -hmm. 
I put things in mind purposely. To see if someone's reading it. To see it. if someone's, so I put a question there, ask yeah. me about this. You, what do they call those, like little, what do you guys call those, unicorns or something like that, where you put like a, put a little secret unicorn in there and see if they're, they're, they're in there. Yeah. So I know if they took the time to really read my profile. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm testing. This has been awesome. I, I really appreciate your insights and sharing and um, you have a lot to offer. Thank you. So... What is the legacy you'd like to leave behind? That's a great question. Yeah. So, so I, I feel there's two legacies. So I have my living legacy, which that's a good one right now. I want to kind of keep that for a couple more years. Yeah, exactly. And I think I've established that by sharing some of those stories and, and many more. And that keeps me happy. And then I, I know that I'm making others happy. Mm -hmm. and changing lives and changing my own life and doing it. So mm -hmm. that legacy is there. The book is a legacy. Yeah. But I think the legacy I want to leave behind is that, you know, Larry put others before himself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so I want people to know that Larry was not about Larry. Mm -hmm. Larry was back in college, and that's why yeah. he's come full circle. Mm -hmm. But the Larry, you know, today and... When and I'm was no there a pivotal here. event between the college Larry and the the new Larry? Was there something, anything in your life that happened that you're like, oh, I got to change my ways? I wasn't a bad person, right. you know, and it, I think it, it was actually probably more kind of early to mid career mm -hmm. when I met a gentleman from a law firm, and you know what he did. You know, we had this this great meeting, right. It, he was completely unapplicable to what I was doing, but a woman I know said, you got to meet this guy. He's he's different. And a connector. And he's a connector, which I didn't know what that was. At the end of our meeting, he said, Larry, I want to introduce you to two people you don't know. I said, why, Brian? Why would you do that? He said, I just think it's a way to build out your network and meet people you don't know that you should know. Mm -hmm. Now, that didn't change me overnight. I wasn't now. I got to connect everyone I meet right. to two people they don't know but it's stuck in my head, just like the things that I share in my book. Mm -hmm. So I want people to change, transform, think of others before themselves, not lead with themselves, right. ask more, listen more, mm -hmm. and and start to do things for other people. And, and you'll feel good about it, mm -hmm. you will. And so I have a lot of people already that read the book or hear me speak and they go, Larry, I just did, I've had executives call me up and all types of people. Yeah. I just put this person with this person. I never would have done that before until I heard you or I'm, I'm volunteering or I'm mentoring. And I believe in karma. I believe in everything that you're saying. And I think there's something in the universe that supports it, mm. that we do that. And, you know, you give good, good things come your way. It's a circle. I agree. Um, so, Larry, tell our listeners where they can find you. They can find me everywhere. So I'm out there in the speaking circuit. You can find me on LinkedIn. So I, I share a lot of content, a lot of information, but you can go on LinkedIn, find me in Chicago, Yes, Larry Kaufman. So last name is 1F, 1M, 1N. Gotcha. Easy to find me on LinkedIn. But don't mess up and think that you are the chess master, right? Right. There is a Larry Kaufman. Now, I don't think he's on LinkedIn, but if you do a Google search... He'll come up and I'll come up. I think I come up more. Yeah. But he's better at chess than me. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> okay. And then I have a, a website with my content. So Kaufman Larry.com. And then Amazon, where my book is housed, and I have an author page. So just type in The NCG Factor by Larry Kaufman, and you will find me there. Well, thank you so much. This has been a fabulous conversation. And I really appreciate you taking the time and being so generous with your wisdom and your time. Thank you, Lorette. It's been awesome.